never ever have enough time to play at all you know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes everyone's forgotten Hey guys, welcome back to Otter Creek in Rio Grande. And I've put the final touches, so to speak, on the spline going across the back here. That was kind of the last little bench work thing that I wanted to do. And it's not, it's not finished, it's not complete. I've just got this back there in, in such a way that I can step back, look, and see, do I like it? Do I not like it? What is the terrain gonna look like? Uh, what other things should I consider before I move on? And right now, right directly behind the stamp mill, I've made about nine inches to the top of the spline. And I think that's really all the higher it ever will need to be. And so that's kind of, you know, where I'm at is thinking about what is going to happen down on this end and what is the final height that I need the spline to be going into the town of Aspen, which, you know, I'm going to rename that something eventually. So it's not Aspen. It's something that works for the Otter Creek. But if, if I do choose to go this height, I will more than likely begin a downhill grade into the town because I don't think I want the town to be any more than maybe 55 inches. And I'm 61 and a half to the top right there. So, you know, it's really, it's, it comes down to a decision on whether or not I want a, a trailing point siding to come off the spline and go into the top of the mine there. And, you know, I don't have to make that decision now. I'm leaning towards not doing it. I don't think I really need to by any means. Uh, <laughs> things are complicated enough as they are. But uh, I think, you know, what I'm, I'm ready to do is make sure that all of my feet, so to speak, for the plywood here is exactly where I want them and get them either glued or screwed or both or make some decisions there because I'm ready to take this plywood off and begin working on the wiring and getting the track work permanent at least to where that turnout there is. Now, before I get carried away and, and off to the races on doing some model railroad work, Paul at ironworksmodels.com, ironworkmodels.com at uh, Inglewood, Colorado, sent me some free samples. Uh, I guess Paul watches the channel and was gracious enough to reach out to me. And he sent me some pot belly stoves. Some tables and benches. And those look really nice. Uh, some chairs. And then I really like these. These are uh, shake shingles. These will for sure, I don't know if I'll go on the next structure build I do but uh, they're for sure going to get used. And then he also got me some corrugated metal roofing. I believe this is paper. Uh, yep, made out of high quality artist paper. Good looking stuff. So if you're uh, into doing anything, you know, with some prints, and I, if I understand right, I think he also will help sell your prints you know, if, if you've got a design and, and don't have the capacity maybe to print a bunch of them, you know, go to his website, check him out, and uh, maybe you can work out something with him. Good stuff.
last section of Maroon Creek is ready for final track installation and wiring. And you know, I had a lot of this cork that was left over from, from previous sections of the layout that was all scrap. I used it uh, to come up with where the road bed is gonna be. And I've got some more of it. I've got a, another whole new roll that I've got for the larger section of where I'm at right now. The plan at this point is instead of getting started on the track work and the wiring here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the other side of the river, get started on the cork with it, and then so while that cork is drying, uh, I can start on the track work here and kind of bounce back and forth between those two things and optimize the amount of time spent uh, doing multiple things.
might be wondering why I've got the, the plywood back up in here. And it's because, you know, before I get started on the wiring, I want to have a, a real good visual idea of how to proceed. You know, I've got three major elements going on here that I've got to consider. That's the AC power, the DCC buses, because I've got multiple buses to think about, and the LCC wiring. So I might get a little long-winded here, but I'm just kind of thinking through this myself. So the AC, right now, I've got, whoops, I've got this switch, which turns on my computer. I've got this switch, which turns on everything in the staging yard. This switch, which turns on frying pan and silver gulch. And then this is non-wired. This will be uh, Maroon Creek. So the plan there is to come from this wall socket to the switch and then from the switch to some kind of panel in here somewhere where I will have a multi-plug adapter that I'm actually turning on with the switch. Now, also a consideration that, you know, I probably don't need to get too worried about right now is I've got room for one more of these light switch boxes. And with two more switches, I'll have one for Cloud City, which is over there. And I said Maroon Creek on this one. It will also turn on Aspen. It'll turn on both Aspen and Maroon Creek. The two switches here will turn on Cloud City and the Time Saver. Now what that means in order for this to work, the way I'm gonna do that, and I might be a little overkill or overthinking things, but over here, I've got two separate circuits on two different breakers, and I've only got two. I want Cloud City and the Time Saver to be on a separate circuit. And the plan there is to go ahead and come over the top of the wall, top of the door here to make that happen. Uh, the same thing is gonna have to happen with the bus, the DCC bus going to Cloud City and Maroon, or not Maroon Creek, uh, Cloud City and the Time Saver. That way I'm not transversing the entire outside of the wall, you know, from, you know, just, that's just a lot of wire. And as much as I don't like the idea of going over the top of the door, I think that's the best way to handle it. And that's also the reason why I've never put any fascia around the door, it's because I have had it in my mind the entire time that if I can hide that wiring, you know, by doing something with the fascia, that's my plan because there'll be probably two different sets of DCC wiring going there, one for Cloud City and one for Maroon, or for the Time Saver. So since I'm already talking about the DCC bus, so for Maroon Creek, I'm looking at, I guess you could say four different buses, depending on how you look at it, and I apologize now for any DCC specialists if I misuse the terminology or anything like that. But essentially I'm gonna have one bus line going to the door that's gonna handle that trackage that's in the staging yard back there going towards the door. I'm gonna have to have one coming this way for everything, you know, back to my left. And then, then another line that will come through here. And then I want a fourth separate line that is going to the spline for it because that needs to be isolated for, for block detection. So it will have its own bus that then I can put one 
CT coil on, which then, you know, makes it detectable. And then so I don't have to worry about putting multiple CT coils on where all the drops are on that. Cause there's gonna be at least three or four feeder drops on that. And then the next bus line I've got to consider is the one that is going to Aspen because it needs to go two different directions as well. One across the top here that's going back towards the corner around to the left and behind me. And then the other one back over here that is going back to frying pan. So that's a consideration. Now the last thing to kind of think about is the LCC and it's, it's not gonna be too terribly bad uh, other, other than kind of getting a plan to where to put the different components and how to deal with the CAN bus. And the CAN bus is gonna be pretty simple. Now I'm not gonna crawl under the layout, but you know, in one of these LCC nodes, the line leaves and goes up underneath the L girders here back to frying pan and silver gulch. What I'll do there is I'll disconnect that line here and I'll probably need to shorten it and then it will connect to whatever structure I put in here to hold the nodes and then I will create a, no a new line that will go from that node back over here so that I'm not, you know, coming back from frying pan back over here. That, that's gonna be pretty simple. It's just a matter of geographically figuring out where the components are gonna go. Kind of the next thing that I wanna think about is what components are gonna go where. And so I've got three circuit breakers. These are, I guess, PSX ones or the whole thing together is considered a PSX3, I guess. And so I've got one for Maroon Creek, one for Aspen, and then the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and figure it for Cloud City. And I'm gonna do a little research. Part of me likes the idea of these all being in the same location. Another part of me would like them to be at the location of where they're gonna be the circuit breaker for. That way, if they do trip and I've got a speaker in them, you know kind of immediately where it was, where if one of these trip and you're across the room, you really don't necessarily know where your short is. Uh, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about that a little more. But for sure, one of these, the one that's gonna be for Maroon Creek, is gonna come out somewhere and so I'm gonna need a jumper from it to the plywood. And so that's important to me because knowing where that location is on the plywood is kind of the beginning of the wiring for the plywood. That's why I'm doing all of this. Now, here are the two nodes. These are uh, tower LCCs. They each have 16 input output channels or lines, I guess I should say. And so I've got a total of 32 lines for Maroon Creek. And then I've got two stall motor drivers because I think I've got either 12 or 13 tortoises or switch motors. For sure, two of these, I think at this point are gonna be at the east end. And then the other two are gonna be at the west end. And then I've got another block occupancy detector eight. So I got eight more blocks I can use with this. I'm gonna double check and kind of see where I'm at on all of that. There's there's still a lot of things configuration wise and I guess spreadsheet wise that I need to work on before I'm ready to get serious about that part of it. But for sure this and you know, what is the size of the device that I need to mount this to. And it needs to be at least 18 inches wide, I think. 
and I think that's gonna that's gonna do it. I just got to decide exactly where it's gonna be. I've decided on the resting place for where all the components are gonna go, and it's gonna be back here. Now, I'm not a hundred percent sure, you know, how far left or right it's gonna go, but it's you know within six inches of where it's gonna be. So just thinking about Aspen, the, the bus is gonna come from the booster over to here. It'll be the first circuit breaker on the left. And then that bus line will go two directions, one off to the left towards Aspen, and then the other line will come up and underneath all of the bench work associated with the high line all the way back to frying pan. The next circuit breaker, you know, the, the, the bus from the booster is still coming this way. The next circuit breaker will be Maroon Creek. And so that bus line is gonna go up to about midpoint here for the trackage that's gonna go there. And then another line will come completely through here and then terminate somewhere down on this end. And then the line continuing from there will also go to frying pan, which will be a separate detected block. So that's where I'm at. I was up underneath there, you know, figuring out the exact location or, or close enough to the exact location of my terminal blocks, you know, cause I'm gonna have to jump from this piece of plywood to that piece of plywood. And I remembered that I haven't really <laughs> messed with the river at all. So there's some bench work considerations with it that I wanna take care of before I you know, get started down any wiring rabbit holes. So I think that's really the next thing I need to do is work out what the final, I guess, depth of the river is gonna be and how, how that's gonna work with the bench work. I think my video is already getting close to 30 minutes long, so I'm not gonna mess with any of that on this video. I may or may not even document what I do with that, you know, as I go, I probably won't. I'll probably just do it and at the beginning of the next video, show you what I've done. And then the next video uh, be primarily wiring because I think that's really what I'm ready to step into. The preliminary wiring and, and getting the rest of the track work done. Uh, you know, the track work just needs to be put in there. It's really, there's not much work to it it's just a matter of putting in its final resting place and putting the, the feeder drops in. So with uh, nothing else left to say, I think uh, we're gonna call this one quits and we'll see you next time on Otter Creek and Rio Grande. supposed to be. So we go camping on the 19th and 20th. We're going camping on the 19th and the 20th? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, looks like I'm going camping on the 19th and the 20th.